for some people to get in here and do a little lesson today. We got people joining. All right, all right, all right. Nice footstool. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's right. When I survived and got out of the hospital, I bought myself a switch for me and my daughter. You guys should get Mario Kart Live if you uh, if you have a switch because it's the most amazing thing in the world. You can actually play as a little Mario Kart with a camera on it and drive onto your couch and create a course in your living room. It's the most amazing thing in the world. Your wives will hate you because you make a mess creating a course, but... Hello! Wow, people are actually in here today, maybe because I advertised it. You guys ever play your pan upside down? When you're out of every idea, that then you got just gotta flip it upside down. <laughs> Do you have a fan on? No. So, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Amado! Man, there's some people in here. Well, I'll do a little playing. So this is, um, today's lesson is gonna kind of be about applying um, different instrument grooves, rhythms, and techniques to the hand pan, which I think go very well, particularly Middle Eastern instruments tend to, to go very um, well, especially tabla techniques. I know uh, Mark Knight was mentioning uh, in the Handpan Instruments groups about that. And I've been doing, you know, well, let's start off with a little history about me. I'm a drum set player, you know, since I was seven. And then came percussion like jambe and stuff, bongos, congas, and then at Berkeley College of Music, I got into ocean drum, udu, and tabla, and then tabla, after tabla came hand pan. So, well, yeah, pretty much. After tabla came happy drum, which I just sold, <laughs> finally, and uh, some wooden tongue drums that my wife got me, and then that led into hand pan. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a rhythm guy, so... All this harmony and melody is new to me, and you know I created these these two albums just from repetition and, and playing my go-to muscle memory grooves and, and coming up with compositions and uh, just trial and error, right? Trial and error. Because I don't know I don't know what I'm doing harmonically. I just play what sounds good, right? Yes, Amado. Out of topic question. Can you recommend a good frame drum brand? A good frame drum brand, I would say. Um, well, I play the Remo Ocean Drums. Um, let me go. Since you're talking about that, let me just go grab one so you can see. They're good. Uh, Cooperman is really good. So 
So these are the uh, the Remo Ocean drums. I have three sizes, and this is a Cooperman Kanjira. That's the only Cooperman product I have. But these um, these Remo Ocean drums are great. You know, you can make the ocean sound. But you can also play them, right? Right? Uh, yeah, I wish I need to get a Cooperman frame drum, but yeah, this is a Remo Ocean drum. These are nice, though. You play them on both sides, they have different vibes. expensive but they're definitely worth it they've lasted me a long time yeah but you can see this is all that's left <laughs> look at this is all that's left from the textured side of this one because I uh, used to play in the bog swing groups Django Reinhardt stuff where I'm just going has wiped away. As you can see, it's still left on this one. Peeling. It's all synthetic on these remotes, but they're fun. I've actually, you know, now that I have you guys here, I might as well show off what I've been working on. This will get to hand pan stuff eventually, but I'm just going with the flow today. So, Amato asked about ocean drum, uh, frame drums. So, here's something I've been practicing in my attic every day. Hello, I'm glad people are actually in here. So. Here's something I've been trying to practice. So yeah, it's just trying to do multiple frame drums at the same time while keeping a, a, a two, three alternating uh, clave um, going. So <laughs> ocean drums can be really fun. And the Cooperman Kinjira is, is very nice. Sounds really nice with a mic, if you've ever heard of Kenjira. I am not very good at the Kenjira, but I try. Very novice Kanjira player, but it's really difficult instrument. Um, I once saw V. Salvaganesh show up, Zakir Hussein. Uh, it was pretty amazing <laughs> to see, you know, a one-handed instrument go against the master. But V. Salvaganesh is the master as well. So, Takajunata, yes. So let's. Um, so some other ways we can kind of get into 
more handpan stuff now is, you know, a lot of these techniques can be applied to the handpan, right? Um, for one, you know, we can kind of approach this like a vertical. Where's my switch? Where's my foot switch? Where's my switch foot? All right. So I don't know if you guys play vertical or not, but I like to lock it at this angle where the lip of the pan is, is in between. I don't even, you don't even have to touch it. Just be careful. So you kind of lock it in at that kind of angle. And a good way to practice is just hitting the ding and the goo open sound at the same time. So you're pushing the force into each other so you're not hitting one before the other and knocking it out of your lap. If you have a note, like on this, you can hit the note on the bottom and the ding. Yeah, or another note. So here's a little kind of groove I've been doing with those two notes. You know, what I was doing there was just a lot of muscle memory stuff that I do on the tabla. So I think the key to applying any, any kind of, and I'm just a beginner at the tabla as well, maybe a little more than a beginner, but I'm pretty novice as well at the tabla. So you know, you just take a little bit of these ideas and apply them to the handpan. So it, it all starts with probably learning you know, the proper techniques for, for uh, the particular instrument. Like as Mark was talking about, he wanted to know tabla, uh, how to apply tabla techniques to the handpan. So the first place to start is the tabla, right? So let's go to the tabla now. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Cool? Everybody cool? Okay. It's good to be here with you guys on this Sunday. 
I'm going to try and keep these a regular thing on Sundays <clears throat> now that we're all trapped in our houses. All right. So, the different strikes to the hand pan. Um, so the, the you know strikes on the on the tabla you have a flat hand down that's ka ka let's get a let's get a pan So you can do the same thing. Just like a cupped, muted strike, right? Can't really see that. Alright. So that's ka. We have the right hand going like this, right? Three, one, thumb. Which is not thumb isn't really used at all, but so it's basically just three and one, and you're gonna be going like this three, one, tap, 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 or terra, tap, tap, right? You can call it different things. So then on the hand pan, right on the ding, you have to do a three and a one, and these are muted strikes. Right? You could do them open as well. But then I wouldn't call that ta, right? The muted strikes. trying to hit in the same center spot, turning your wrist, pretending there's a string coming out and your wrist is rotating on it. making sense? People that are in here? Hey, Carlos. What's up, buddy? Is this making sense, guys?
All right, so we have te, te, ta, right? And you could do that on the hand pan anywhere. All muted though. Right, it doesn't always have to be on the ding. It's just about the motion and the muscle memory, right? So let's try and do this. This is a good exercise. Before I teach you guys another bowl, they're called the table strike. Let's just do uh, like a single time, double time exercise. So let's see. Let's see. I'm, this is recording on YouTube at the same time, so I will have a clearer uh, than usual live video on YouTube because usually I upload these from Facebook to YouTube and they usually are like a second off and not very good. So this will be a good quality one on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. All right, so let's keep going here. We have nine people in here. Uh, did I miss any questions? Okay. All right. Thanks, Lloyd. <clears throat> so, I don't know if Mark Knight is in here, but this is, um, I hope I'm, you know, helping him and any others. And this can be applied with all different instruments, right? Not just tabla. You take um, whatever technique from whatever instrument and you can apply it to the hand pan. The hand pan is like, it's like clay. It's a uh, very, very malleable, forgiving instrument, you know? As long as you don't hit it too hard, you can pretty much get away with many different techniques. <clears throat> and uh, the tabla, it's velocity that you strike the tabla and the velocity that you strike a hand pan is pretty similar, I would say. So, it, you know, it, for me, it was a really easy transition. And um, because of a lot of this, the strikes, like in particular, this next one I'll, I'll show you now, is um, the same exact, to get a one hand harmonic on the hand pan, you do this na, or some people call it ta, but I call it na. So let me bring the table close so you guys can see what's happening. All right, the pinky is, is on the edge. The ring finger is muting right on the uh, gob, the black part, and then the middle finger is floating in the air and you striking the outer edge with like an anchor kind of like a... And that's the same thing you're gonna do on the hand pan on any note in the fifth or the octave position to get a one-handed harmonic. The same exact, exact thing happening. YouTube, so you can see. Okay, so let's try that motion on the hand pan, and uh, it should automatically give you a one-handed harmonic. Okay, so 
same thing that we were just doing on the tabla now. You're going to put your, we could start off um, muting um, with the ring finger at 3 o'clock if it was a clock, and then striking with the pointer finger at 6 o'clock. That gives you one of your one hit harmonics. And you notice I'm coming down straight, my whole arm is coming down, I'm not going like, like moving, breaking my wrist. The whole, um, from your finger that's striking all the way to your elbow is like a, pretend it's like an iron rod that can't be broken. So I'm not just going like, like that because it doesn't work. You have to come down and literally hit with the whole length of your finger, like, um, you know, if, if you drop the tree straight down. Leaving the ring finger and the pinky on lightly. That's what's creating the, the isolation. And then to get the other one, you just turn your hand this way where you're muting now with your uh, ring finger at 6 o'clock and now you're going to be striking at 10 o'clock to get, I think that's probably the fifth. Alright, so that's how you get both harmonics and this works on any note. Alright. You just have to find the dimple and then you know treat it as if it's a clock. Um, and you know some positions are, are more awkward than other the more you go up so you might have to um, get a little awkward or just do a two-handed uh, for some notes if it's impossible. But um, let me demonstrate a little groove that I like to do using that one-handed harmonic on this Asachan Saladin. Carlos is in here. Your playing is phenomenal. Oh, dude, we got a jam, man. Thank you, my friend. Guys, Carlos Rodriguez is in here. I'm honored. I still need to hear your new album, my friend. Let's swap. I'll send you mine. You send me yours. Seriously. I want the hard copy, and you got to have the hard copy of mine. If anybody behind me, these are on sale um, in, my, um, in my store right now which is um, Jacob Cole Percussion, Big Cartel. And lessons are for sale as well. I am extending the sale till the new year. So everything's 20% off. I got some handpan masterclass merch left and a couple hundred, maybe 150 hard copies of Hope and then that's it. Um, so check out the store. I should have put a link here, but if you search Jacob Cole Percussion, Big Cartel, you'll find it. There's also a link 
on uh, my Instagram page, Jacob Cole Percussion. So yeah, let's um, let's keep moving along. So <clears throat> did I miss any questions about the tabla um, applications? I'm gonna just keep going with the tabla stuff now. Um, so yeah, the one-handed harmonics. That's the same. It's it just happens to be the same exact motion and technique as the tabla. Thank you, Kristen. <clears throat> Kristen just posted the link to my web store if you guys are interested in getting my albums or lessons or merch 20% off. So, um, yeah, so the one-handed harmonics are great. Um, and then, you know, you can always turn, turn stuff sideways, right? That's what I like to do when I'm doing the, uh, the Middle Eastern Indian kind of grooves, and then you can get the, the vertical grooves. See what's happening on the left side. I'm going. All right, so I'm using kind of like udu on this side, and then more of a tabla stuff on this side. Right, so you get kind of a merdungum style, which is sideways tabla drum, which is super hard. Um, and it's kind of interesting to play it this way. You know, you can do all sorts of tabla stuff. Um, That's what you learn as a as a beginner student and uh, of tabla, and so I just applied that to the vertical, and that's 16 beats, and then you can do different phrases off of it. But um, so yeah, and then you could do different all sorts of grooves like that, you know. I do the ta uh, to taka juna ta one on it ta. You want to line it up when you're playing a vertical so you can kind of start thinking about how am I going to get these chords happening with it, right? With one hand, try and get two chords, or one chord, I should say, with two hands, right? stuff. I don't know if he still makes them. But I was honored to have him make me one. And luckily this is the only drum it fits in is my Asachan Saladin and it just makes perfect sense for this drum. It's the only one it fits in. It's like Cinderella and the slipper. So and it just happens to always be in tune with it. Let's see. So you got this Merdungum tabla like head. It's synthetic. Not as easy to slide as the tabla, but it's fun.
um, start to play it as if it's not even a handpan, you know? I was kind of, I almost forgot it was a handpan for a second. Not really. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> Those old Asachans, man, I'll tell you. This is, you're right, this is a 2014, this is my second handpan I got, 2014. Asachan Saladin, and it's, it sounds good with the, even with this plugged, you know? Of course, having it plugged, it takes away a little bit of the resonance, but it's still awesome. Awesome, Amato. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that uh, you find it inspiring. <clears throat> um... Yeah, I think being a percussionist really helps with a lot of this this stuff. Um, it's all I know is is just exploring. And I'm not even a traditional guy, you know. Like I take a little bit of the tabla. I'm not a master. I'm not, you know. I just take a little bit. Take a little bit of the dumbek. Take a little bit of the udu. Take a little bit of Afro-Cuban, and I put it all together. Mix it up in my Jacob pot, and then I smoke it. I mean, and then I, uh, I drink it. So we have, we have many different approaches. Um, yeah, this is really fun. Pretty cool, right? But yeah, you can take uh, any, any, any groove on any instrument. Here's a, a doom bag right next to me. So here's a little doom back, right? Take this. So let's see. I never really tried that, but let's just see what happens on a handpan if we try that, right? be like a
<laughs> yeah, a song called It's Saladin. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that is... Um, and see, so you guys can see what I'm doing on the congas. And I'm not, um, you know, I'm a, also a beginner conga player, you know, but take a little bit, bring it over here, and it, it adds a whole nother vibe to it, right? Let's see, what was I doing? privately know that groove because I have taught it uh, to them if they're more uh, advanced I usually teach them that one so it's the same kind of rhythm but I'm just placing it in a different way that it makes sense right while still getting the same tones right same thing with the tabla it's all about the tones when you play these instruments it's all about the many different combinations of tones, really, um, in a row. That's the magic. Right? If you're just going... Right? What, what is that? Right? It's just really muddy sounding and everything sounds the same. So when you isolate those tones, right? Muted tones, open tones, harmonic tones, dynamic, loud, soft, accents, got people in here. You never taught about making solo video? You never taught about making small video of one rhythm at a time? I would use them as a daily video. Yeah, maybe I'll start doing that on Instagram. So, um, yeah. What else do I have to talk about? I don't know. Maybe I could real quick talk about, unless someone, anybody have any questions that they want to... It's okay, Amato. <laughs> um, anybody have any more... Anything they'd like to talk about? YouTube, thanks for, thanks for hanging in there. Um, well, I guess I could talk about, um, ah, that's okay, buddy. So, I could talk about, meters doing um, getting your middle finger pointer fingers working with each other I don't know here let's see we have questions coming in here we go thanks for sharing some of your ideas 
Beat Queen David says, still working on that groove you showed me on our last Skype call. Awesome input. Oh, great. Amato says, can you tell more about the frame jump technique when you snap your finger on the instrument? Okay. We'll get to the other um, questions uh, in a second. Um, so you want to know about frame drum technique when you snap your fingers. Sure. Um, yeah, so your hand just kind of rests on the top uh, at like 12 o'clock. It's kind of like that, right where your wrist breaks, just kind of resting it there. And then uh, if you're righty, I'm righty, your right hand is going to be playing at, um, you know, 10 o'clock. Right? And you're going the same kind of thing as the tabla, right? three and one, but now we're gonna use our thumb as well, and our hands like this. So you can just practice doing this. Three is, is on the edge, up, and one is on the edge down. Three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, right? And then with the left hand, you snap in past your thumb and let it rest into the drum. So you're still snapping, but you don't hear the snap, you just hear the, the uh, into the drum part. You can snap with multiple fingers. I can really only snap with two, very good. Right, I'm alternating between my um, pointer and middle there. It's good practice. I should probably do it with all of them. Usually I just use um, my middle or my ring finger for snapping. And then, so here's a rhythm you can do. Thumb is going to come down in the middle. Right? Thumb, thumb. Okay, so there we go. Thumb, snap. Thumb, snap. Thumb, snap. Three. Thumb, snap. have a drum you could just practice it you know, on a book or a Nintendo switch box thumb snap three one thumb snap three one thumb snap three one thumb snap three one maybe I'll just do the rest of the lesson on, on this box thumb snap three one has a good tonal quality to it thumb snap three one Thumb snap, three, one. Thumb snap, three, one. Thumb snap, three, one. Thumb snap, three, one. Okay, and then the next part. Thumb snap, three, one, snap. 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 Part. Thumb snap three one snap three. Okay, and remember three is up with the three on the edge. Thumb snap three one snap three, and then you repeat back to the thumb. So it goes like. Thumb snap three one snap three, and then it takes you back to the thumb. So. Thumb, snap, three, one, snap, three, thumb, snap, three, one, snap, three, thumb, snap, three, one, snap, three, this is in six. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three,
So that's the end. Three thumb takes you up, down, like that. by my teacher Jamie Haddad taught me that one. If you have an ocean drum, you can do the chick instead of the snap. It was a good one rhythm to really trance out in, right? Because anything in three or six kind of has that African put you in a trance vibe. So now you can make this in seven by putting a pause, uh, two, making two uh, a rest, right? So now it's going to be thumb, and then two is going to be a rest. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. But everything else is the same, right? You're just putting a pause, and then it's still the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thumb, snap three. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 first two rhythms I learned on frame drum and ocean drum actually right there. All right. I hope that answers some questions. I know I kind of went a little into a ocean drum lesson, but hey, this is a percussion uh, group. Can you tell me more about, okay, we did that. And then what would, you, what would a private lesson entail for a new, for a fairly new player? Well, I, my, my, uh, I'm pretty open you know, I kind of go um, whatever you want to work on. So if you if you contact me and you want to study, we can um, approach it however you want. I'm pretty open. I don't really, not a stickler, um, but uh, yeah, whatever works for you, really. Whatever you want to work on, we can we can talk about. So yeah, send me a message if you if you want to study. If you want to see how it would be, we could set up a, a one lesson. And uh, yeah, all my lessons are twenty percent off until next year. And I teach drum set, hand pan, and all sorts of world percussion, as you see here. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. So, I hope you guys... Yeah, I think we should wrap it up. It's 55 minutes. Wow, this is a good one. I hope you guys got some uh, good info out of this. And... Um, Yeah, maybe I'll just end with a little toggle playing. Oh, we have a question. Hey, Jacob, thank you for the lesson. Do you have an approach on polyrhythms on the frame jump? Uh, yeah, all right. Um, so I've been actually working on this in particular. It's funny you say that. Um, you might have missed what I was doing earlier. I'll do it again, though, because... I'm pretty proud of it, and it took me a, a long time to even be able to do it, even though it's still sloppy. So here's some polyrhythms for you. I'm going to be doing a clave in my left hand here, right? And then I'm going to be doing some, some grooves in between with different tones between the bass drums, okay? So some different polyrhythm stuff going on. So that's, you know, that's kind of a 
crazy approach, but um, more simple things I've been working on with the, with the ocean drum in particular was um, keeping like a two and a four on the chick, like a... question something about polyrhythms oh yeah the frame jump yeah um, so yeah that's one way to approach it um, but you know many different things can happen um, says, what is a polyrhythm? A polyrhythm is just any kind of multiple rhythms happening at the same time. You know, the basic ones are two over three. Right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right. Da, 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 Christmas song. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So you're starting them at the same time and they're coming back together. So you're doing two over three. Together, right, left, right. Um, and now the other easy one is three over four. Together, right, left, right, left, right. Together, right, left, right, left, right. Together, right, left, right, left, right. Or if you're lefty, together, left, right, left, right, left. Together, left, right, left, right, left. But I usually do it the right way, righty way. Not the right way. Together, right, left, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, left, right, together. Okay? So that's basic polyrhythms, but really polyrhythms are just any multiple rhythm that's happening at the same time. Um, so yeah, good question though. Any other questions that I missed? Please on hand pan backbeat grooves. Okay. Well, you know, the pocket is what you're talking about, right? From the back beat, the pocket on two and four. I'm a drum set guy, so you know that's that's what you want to have. So I'm looking at the hand pan. I'm thinking like bass drum, snare drum would be an interstitial on the side or the outer rim, right? Those are kind of be where you can get your snare sounds and then your bass sounds, right? So with a, with like a groove with a back beat, you want to keep the that two and the four are pretty pocket, right? Pretty consistent.
knock it for one second. But it's okay as long as you come back to one, right? Uh, I did it that time. I guess I'm not taking a break. And even when I do that, I'm switching the, the pocket to the one hand harmonic in the same spot where it would be over here, right? So I'm still trying to give you that pocket. I hope that answers some questions there. Um, all right, so any more, any more questions? I'm happy you guys are in here still hanging out with me. YouTube, I didn't forget about you. This will be the best quality live lesson I, I have on YouTube, so. And we're over an hour now. All right, we did good. Thanks, guys. Cool, but not easy. Well, okay. <laughs> You're right. That that groove is not easy. That because um, it's all linear, you know. So a, a linear groove is is not easy because it's all connected by sixteenth notes in a row, and nothing hits at the same time. drum style that I learned at Berkeley it was linear styles and it's very applicable to the handpan you know nothing hits at the same time so let's do a simple pocket groove right so you just if you take that groove let's see you just switch it one still on the bass drum and, you know, keeping track of the meter. Amato, you're too kind. No, I usually hate myself. <laughs> Ask my wife. Um, especially after a gig. Uh, that's the worst. Usually hate myself. So, thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, I'm just happy to be alive. You know, I, I had a rough summer. And I'm, I'm recovering nicely now. I'm getting my energy back and shedding a lot. And um, yeah, I hope you guys, I hope you guys got um, some good stuff out of this. This has been the longest live lesson I've done and, and maybe the best. I, I think there's some good content today. Um, you know, I didn't really know how it was gonna go. You'd ask my wife, I was kind of nervous before doing this, but it worked out like it always does. Thank you, Kristen for always encouraging me. You're the best. Everybody give Kristen some thanks because she you're, she's the reason this group even exists. Um, I'm pretty shy, hermit-like creature. <laughs> and my wife made me make this group. Here she is now commenting. Uh, so she pushes me to do this stuff. Otherwise, you guys would never even know me. I'd just be playing worms. And that would be it. That would be my life. I'd be the Worms champion. I used to be top 100 Worms player in the world. <laughs> so, um, this, is this is fun. What else? Anything else, guys? I feel like we covered enough. But if there's any more questions... Yes, thank you, Kristen Powers. My wife that encourages me to do anything. Um... Yeah, it's been real. I'll, I guess I'll end on a little bit of tabla playing. And then if there's any more questions, we can answer them. Let's play Worms. Yeah, dude. Find me on Switch. I have Worms. I'll own you. I'll own you. All right. You guys are welcome. Thanks for joining me here in, in the attic in Scranton, Pennsylvania, home of the office. And now, pressure, bye!
Riding with Biden. I'm riding with Biden. Not really. All right. So, thanks, everybody. He's got to be better than Trump, right? it folks like I said I'm a novice tabla player but you know you take any of these uh, ideas and you can apply them um, to the handpan or to the drum set or to whatever you are playing it all starts with just you know learning a little bit and so if anybody wants to learn a little bit I can teach you a little bit of all these instruments and um, I hope you guys are all having a great Sunday. Don't forget, we got my music. Hope's almost been out for a year. Um, and uh, I worked really hard on this. Pretty proud. You got Solar Disc, which is 12 tracks featuring hand pan, me on drum set, me on tabla, me on percussion, and my violinist, my dad on bass, lots of local musicians that are very talented like um, Mark Woody on violin, John Ventry on bass, my dad Joe Cole on upright bass, Roy Williams on guitar, um, Ben Lee on electric guitar. So, and then we have Lunar Disc, which is all handpan stuff without any percussion, just strings and handpan. It's very sleepy time, nice. So it's worth getting this in my opinion because it's limited and it's pretty sweet. Shane McGee and my buddy helped me come up with the cover. That's my Ayasa uh, Longloy on the cover there. Pretty sweet. So, yeah, these are uh, on sale in my store. Jacob Cole Percussion, Big Cartel, dot Big Cartel or something. There's a link somewhere. And then we have Destiny on sale as well, my first uh, album, which is a lot cheaper. Um, but you will like hope it's it's the most I'm proud of something I've you know made besides my daughter. So thank you guys. Uh, next time let's do a sugar cover. All right. <laughs> yeah, you should learn tabla. It's it's um it's amazing. It's been it's probably the definitely the hardest um, drum. Definitely the hardest drum I've ever attempted to play. And like I said, I'm just a 
a noob novice in my eyes, you know, um, but it's enough for me, it was enough for me to take it to my own creative place with it. Um, you know, not everybody has to be a traditional master, you know, that's what Zakir is for and that's what all these greats are for and I'm just trying to carve my own path, you know, particularly with the hand pan, but applying all of this stuff to it helps and um, I think the world percussion meshes with the hand pan so well, you know. So if, if you're interested in learning uh, some of this, how to apply this to your instrument, please contact me and uh, let's set up some some discounted lessons. Um, my rates are usually uh, 60 an hour or 30 a half an hour, but right now I'm offering 40 an hour or 20 a half an hour. So pretty good deal. Um, so I hope I hope to, um, to see you guys in a private lesson sometime soon. And otherwise, yes, I got to study with Zakir Hussein on Tablo. That's what started me. Um, so thank you guys. And I'll see you maybe next Sunday. We'll try and keep this a regular. We'll see how creative I'm feeling. If not every Sunday, I'll try and do it at least once a month. How about that? <laughs> we'll see how much, you know, we can uh, make this work. So thanks, everybody. Peace.